a view like no other, the Christian view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, with co-hosts Aisha Smith-Dancy, Sandra O'Neill, Dr. Lee Adams, Trudy Davies-Davis, Monica Matthews, Isaac Hernandez, and Caitlin Bryan. Empowering and inspiring, the Christian view. the Christian View. What a great audience we have today. Thank you all for being here and thank you for inviting us into your home just to share God's love and God's word um, for you because he does have a word for you. I have a great panel today. I have Sandra O'Neill. I have Pastor Lee Adams. I have Dan and Rick from Fate Talk Live. So check them out. They're on every day on radio and Facebook now um, every day at 10 o'clock. So check them out. And I have the beautiful Caitlin who is expecting her little <laughs> baby anytime now so we're excited we're excited um, but yeah this is the Christian view we take today's hot topics and we wait against God's Word because God does have a view for you and today's topic is why am I here and God's purpose for my life and I don't know how many times I've asked myself that question Lord what am I doing here what is your purpose for my life every day I ask myself every, every, what am I doing, every day. It's like, <laughs> what am I doing? And, and you know I, I think about that and in counseling I, I I counsel people, and that's one of their biggest, mm -hmm. you know, they're in their 50s, 40s, even 30s. Well, what am I here for? What is my purpose? I was counseling a, a young man last week, and he was just sitting there. He's like, and I said, God has a great plan for you. And he goes, I have, I have no clue how to find it. What, how do I find it? I have no hope. And I feel like there's a lot of people mm -hmm. who are stuck in that hopelessness of, why am I here? Yes. But God created us, Sandra, for a purpose. He created us with a dream inside of us that each of us need to fulfill. So let's talk about that. It says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, and those plans are good. So how do we find one's God-given purpose, God-given dream? You know, that's a great question, and it's very simple, I want to say, mm -hmm. in one regard. There's two steps first one is, what is your moral purpose? Jesus has called us, or God has called us, to have a relationship with His Son, right. Jesus Christ. That is God's purpose in our life, to be saved under the blood of Jesus mm. Christ. We have a moral purpose. So once you become a follower of Jesus Christ, right. you can then dive into the Word, and it, His Holy Spirit starts dwelling inside mm -hmm. of you, and guess what happens? He starts revealing right. Himself to yes. you. Yes. So one of my main things is, if somebody asks me that, I say, do you you know Jesus. Right. Once they know Jesus, you've got that first purpose, yes. which is in a fallen world, we are here now to glorify our right. Heavenly yes. Father in all that we do. Mm -hmm. Now then you have a personal purpose, right? right. What is my per per personal purpose? Well, that's when the Holy Spirit starts revealing daily. And guess what you have to do? Just obey, right. trust, yes. and put one foot in front of right. the other. I will tell you, my purpose in life, I never thought I would be here with you all doing right. TV ministry. But God said to me, Sandra, one foot in front of the other, I will hold your hand. Are you willing to obey me and follow me? The last thing is Psalms 40. Mm. Read it from beginning to right, end. Right. That is such a love story. Mm -hmm. And it talks about how God wants you to have that salvation. And it says at the very end, I think around Psalm 40 verse 8, it talks about Oh Lord, how I love you mm -hmm. and how I want to have your words written in my right. heart. Yeah. And once you start doing that, it's just in step with the Lord. So Just yeah. staying in tune with yes. the Father, staying yeah. in His Word yes. day by day. And mm -hmm. some days it may not yes. look like you think it's going to look. You wake up and you've spent your time with the Lord, right? right. But it may not work the way you thought it was going to work that day. You make it up and your goals and your plans you had set for today, the Lord changed them. Right. Yes. And it says in Proverbs, it says, men have many plans mm -hmm. for their life, but it's I who direct your steps. And so we have to be in tune with the Father. I think that you can't miss yes. your purpose if you ask God where you're supposed to be right. each day. And one thing that I will add to what Sandra was saying is that when I coach clients on purpose, because I'm all about this, because we were all made on yes. purpose purpose and for a purpose yes. and we all have something to live for and one thing I always tell them is to really analyze what are you good at that other people aren't right. good at good. I used to think that God was going to send me to Africa and I was going to have to live in a hut but guess what and that's okay because some people do and be a missionary but right. my parents told me from a young age Caitlin God gave you gifts because he wants to use them he's not going to use give you a purpose outside of the gifting he has naturally right. created that's you good. and so 
I believe that one way we can look at it is what are we naturally good at? Because every gift can be used for the kingdom of God. And one verse that always comes to mind in purpose is James 1 and 5 that says, if anyone, any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to those without finding fault. So if we want wisdom on our purpose, we can ask God. That's right. Say, what That's am right. I good at? What do you want me to do? And he's, it's not hide and seek. He mm -hmm. wants you to find your purpose. <laughs> and, and Dan and Rick, y'all have been doing Faith Talk for seven years mm -hmm. and you've kind of found your groove, but you get to interview many, many people who are walking in their purpose. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think it's important what, what Caitlin pointed out is, is, is look at what you're gifted at. Because yeah. a lot of us, I think we see some giftings and we think, oh gosh, I wish I could do that right. or I wish I could do this. And sometimes God, I think, is pushing us and saying, that's why I've gifted you, do it. But mm -hmm. we're afraid yes. to step out in mm -hmm. faith and say, maybe God has called right. me to this. And, uh, and what's waiting on the other side of that faith step is, is just glory and, right. and wonderful. And I think that's the track of the enemy, and we're going to get to this later, but he wants to keep us in fear. Yes. Yes. Fear of moving forward, fear of taking that one next step. Don't you think, Pastor Lee, of yeah. just moving I think too, forward? And, yeah, we are, we are fearful a lot of times, and what and I would just add to what um, Dan and Rick said, I would um, pray that God shows me my uniqueness, mm -hmm. and as he shows me my uniqueness, that he gives me the confidence right. to be able to walk into it, yeah. because I think a lot of people know maybe the areas of their life where they're really, really good, but they don't have the confidence to step outside of their comfort zone because it's going to make them feel like an outlier mm -hmm. or maybe they'll feel like, okay, well, everybody's eyes are on me. Mm -hmm. That's why their eyes are on you right. because God uniquely qualified you for this right. purpose. And That's if he, good. He, he'll call you and he will qualify you. To yes. Both. Well, we'll be right back with a little bit more on your purpose. And does that purpose change over time? Stay with us. You don't want to miss it here at The Christian View. Welcome back to The Christian View. We're having a great discussion today on what is your purpose? Why am I here? And you know, we had great insight from Sandra earlier and Caitlin, um, but Dan, do you think that our purpose can change throughout our life? You know, we start with one, one purpose at maybe 25. Yeah. Does it stay that way the rest of our life? I think that's an interesting question because I think I think we have an overall purpose that God gives us, mm -hmm. uh, not to get like super theological, but uh, the Westminster Shorter Catechism says the chief end of man is to uh, glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I think that is kind of our overall purpose. That does not change. Right. But I think our, whether you want to call it a mission or a purpose mm -hmm. or our station in life can change, I think. Uh, we start off with certain interests that start us one way, whether the interest be, I want to make a lot of money right. or I want to do what I really want to do. Uh, but then as we go, I think God can sometimes bring other interests in our life that go, you know, like with me, I think I mentioned last time, uh, I have a real interest in counseling. Right. I've done radio forever, but but now looking at counseling, I really enjoy counseling and helping people. And, and God, I think, has kind of developed that in me and, uh, and may have a purpose for me doing that as I move forward. So yeah, I think we have our overall purpose that does not right. change to glorify God, but our purpose or our mission in life can change. Right, right. And I think it changes the more we get in tune with the Lord, yes. the more we get in tune with the Holy Spirit and spending time with Him. Don't you think, Pastor Lee, that, that He kind of changes us? Because it says in Scripture, who changes from glory to glory. Right. So what we started out as may not be what we yeah, finish I as. I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. I think that as we evolve in whatever, in the seasons that God take us through, um, I'm not sure if I would use the word change, but I think it involves and then God enhances right. it. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, mm -hmm. like myself, like when I initially started off as, as a Christian, um, ironically, I was a praise leader for a while. You know, I was a worship leader. I did not and know then, that about you, Pastor. And then I now, mean, you could sing, but I didn't know <laughs> yeah. that you, I did not know that. And then evolving into the pastor. Right. So to me, I think that as you know, the seasons in my mm -hmm. life change, God enhanced my purpose right. and it was became more clear to me what it was that he wanted me right. to do. Right. I think that's that's a great yes. point. And sometimes that you are not you're not you're not ready mm -hmm. for what God has yeah. in store for you next. Right. Yes. You know, I, as I look back, I was um, ready for just a certain area of ministry right. and then God started working in my life and right now my sole ministry is raising an intentional child, right. future Christian leader of America because right now that has been so heavy 
heavy in my heart. I want to fortify her to stand as a warrior. So, and Amen. then you start moving on to other things that God reveals to right. you. But you're right, Trudy, it's very important to stay in tandem with the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit because He will guide you. And guess what? And then all you have to do is just do it. And, and that's, that's so hard! And just, yeah. just do it! And yeah. I think it's it, that's true, and he'll speak things to us, but they may not come to pass for 10 years, right, Rick? Right. He, may, right. he may speak something to us. This is what I want you to do, and I'm preparing you. And then we have to be patient in the pause, hmm. in the moment of just kind of yes. waiting for that to come in, and the training and the do we teaching. Have to be patient? You know, I mean, you, you don't have to be. You, know, you, know, you can be discouraged, you can be disappointed, but that's not going to reap the benefits that God yeah. wants for us, right? And so being patient in the pause, I think, is a good reminder for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And in Ecclesiastes, it says for everything there is a season. And so I think a lot of times our purpose stays the same, but our assignment differs along the journey. And for some of us, our purpose is the purpose that we have from God is the same from birth. Now, the realization of that purpose sometimes takes years right, and years right. to discover it. And so I think that's the exciting thing is that there are different seasons, mm -hmm. but also that God is preparing us for the place he has yes. for us. I just, every time I think about purpose, I think about Joseph mm -hmm. and he went through so many seasons yes. from having the dream about what he knew he was supposed mm -hmm. to do. And he ended up doing, but he went on a journey and he was obedient to those tests. Robert Morris has a book all about dreams and that there are tests we have to pass. Right. And order to fulfill certain areas of our purpose. So that's what excites me is that there are different tests. We Well, not the test, <laughs> but there are different things we can go through and that your purpose can unveil right. throughout your life. Right, throughout, throughout time, just transforming into who God mm -hmm. created you to be. It says in Psalms 139 that he created us yes. in our mother's womb and he had that purpose, plan A for us before we were born. And that's how much he loves us. Yes. Yeah. And Trudy, you asked that question about how do you know? Mm -hmm. How do you know? Well, it's also, it's bearing the fruit. You right. start seeing yes. the fruits of your labor and the fruits mm -hmm. of how God is leading you. Right. If there aren't any fruits, maybe the Lord is leading you to try to get your attention to say, hey, I'm over here. Mm -hmm. And so then you get out of that lane because maybe you're in somebody else's lane. Right. You've got to yeah. stay in your lane. Wasn't there a book God. that was called Experiencing God and it said to yeah. look where God is working and move in that direction. Yes. I think that's true yes. individually yes. just as much as it is corporately. Yes. We look to where God is moving us yes. and then we move that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? And yes. And in, and in it, ironic sometimes we find our purpose through our pain mm -hmm. you know That's a lot powerful. of times yeah, yeah you know the things yeah. that pain us the most is actually where God is really trying to get the glory and the usage out of us right yeah. I agree. I agree. And I just think, you know, we have to stay the course. I think it says, um, mm -hmm. it, like you, you mentioned Ecclesiastic, that Ecclesiastes 3.11 says God has planted eternity in our hearts. Yeah. And that is ultimately the main goal is that we are striving to get to eternity mm -hmm. right. to live with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And everything else is just a byproduct. And I think if we, if we keep that chief purpose in mind of everything we do should glorify God. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and why does it glorify God? Because it helps us to enjoy Him forever. Right. Right. And uh, and if, if everything we're doing, whether it be the, what we started off doing or something else that interests us, if we're doing it to glorify God, I think it, Amen. It, it's totally right. worth it. Yeah. If it's to glorify yeah. the Lord, right. it's totally that's worth the it. Main, yeah. That's the main purpose. That makes and me think of the purpose-driven life. Sorry. Oh, I know. Yeah. No. The chapter that yeah. says that uh, one of our purposes is to bring God pleasure. Yeah. 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 That, that is, is it. You know, and I'm glad you brought it up because there are so many books out there on yes. find your why, find your purpose, but that's probably one of my favorite the books is by, by Rick Warren is, mm -hmm. is you know, your, your purpose-driven life because yes. we have to have that purpose and that purpose really is Jesus Christ yes. Yes. and he will show us our next step don't you think yes, yes absolutely yes. Totally yes. Agree. we'll be right back with a little bit more on the Christian view stay with us don't go away <laughs> back. welcome back to the Christian view we're having a great discussion on your purpose in life. Why are you here? And God has a blueprint for each of you out yeah. there. And he has a blueprint for each of us. Mm -hmm. And it's it's for our good. But we have an enemy and his job is to yes. kill, steal, and destroy and rob us of our purposes and our dreams. Okay. And he has a high success rate. I mean, yeah. he, he he's has a, I, I drive by cemeteries sometimes and I, I think to myself, how many people have gone on and not fulfilled yeah. their God-given purpose, right. their God-given dreams, mm -hmm. because that's what the enemy wants to do. Yeah. But you know, Rick, we've all struggled with unbelief, with doubt, with insecurities, mm -hmm. and you've been in ministry for a long time. So how have you overcome, you know, 
whether it's doubt, unbelief, feeling insecure, so that you have, obviously you found you know, your purpose for now. So how have you overcome? I think we've all covered it in the beginning. A part of it is that we stay connected to God, of course, His Word, and listen to the Spirit of God. Take step by step. Mm -hmm. uh, but also our purpose is always connected with people. Mm -hmm. yes. People speak into our lives right. mm -hmm. uh, and we speak into their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was either Herod or Pilate told Jesus, he said, I could set you free. And Jesus said, no, it was, it, it was my purpose. Right. He used the word purpose yes. in the mm -hmm. English translation, English standard version. He says, my pur purpose that I do this. Right. And so I think we have to have input. As you mentioned, the books, talk mm -hmm. about John Maxwell right. and other people, people in our church, people that we trust that have our lives, uh, they, they consider it uh, valuable mm -hmm. and our callings yes. valuable, our purpose yes. valuable. Right. So I think that's the whole part of discipleship. And we were talking earlier about COVID, how that, you know, a lot of people have been staying at home and watching, which mm -hmm. is good. But on the other side, we're not meeting together and encouraging mm -hmm. one right. another. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's, I want to put input into you yeah. so that you can fulfill your purpose. And your purpose always, Jesus came to what? To die so that we might live. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's purpose to us to fill our purpose, which is to fulfill God's purpose that other people would be saved and ministered to mm -hmm. and built up. That's how we build the church. Right. We, we find out our purpose and we do it right. and we encourage one another. And I think that's a good encouraging and finding like-minded people to come alongside of you because the devil is going to come in mm -hmm. and he's going to put those those thoughts in your head. Right. And it yes. is up to us whether we accept those thoughts or whether, whether we cast yes. those thoughts out. But if we have those who encourage us to move forward, I think it makes it a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. And he wants to make you think you're alone. Mm, he does. Yeah. Because yes. that way yes. he's, he's won. If mm -hmm. you're alone and you think, well, I don't have any purpose and, right. and I'm on my own, then you're ineffective for the kingdom. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. That's powerful when I like what you say, mm -hmm. ineffective. And I think that, you know, as church leaders and as fellow Christians, we have a duty to help train people yes. how to yes. find their purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, I always taught my kids that, you know, if you're experiencing what a lot of people call boredom and you're experiencing something that really makes you feel like, oh my God, I'm just overwhelmed. I don't want to get up in the morning. I don't want to thrive. I can't move forward. It's because at some point you're not really moving in your purpose. Right. And there was one scripture that he talks about in Luke 11, um, 19 through 27 about the parable of the 10 pounds mm -hmm. where Jesus told him to occupy till I come. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so powerful that, you know, if we're occupying and we're being busy mm -hmm. for the things of God, then we really, you don't have time to be bored. You don't right. have time yes. to feel, you know, I think that that would really help people, you know, to move forward and move mm -hmm. um, into your true purpose. Right. I think so. And, and not hiding it. Not being yes. afraid of it. Not being afraid, you know, to go to Sandra and say, you know, I'm struggling today with unbelief. We're yes. struggling today with insecurity mm -hmm. because you may be struggling with it next time. And you know, yes. Trudy and I, we have, you know, we can, we can pray for each other. Absolutely. You know, we can pray for each other and, yeah. and not have to hide our, yes. our weaknesses. Right, and, I right. th and I think that we can do that as when we're Christians, right. we put that filter on yes. and, and you don't want to share it, but then you're negating the opportunity to be ministered right. and for God to get mm -hmm. glory. Mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing to remember too, for those watching is that one of the obstacles I feel like people feel in their selves is that they're too old now right. to oh, do yes. what God has called them mm -hmm. to do. And I feel like you should be encouraged today watching that it's never too late. You know, I think about two people in my life, my dad who was called into ministry at age 18, but didn't plant his church until 40 because he heard negativity from, right. you know, his parents and they mm -hmm. didn't believe in that. And they said, do business. This is what you need to do. Right. Right. But now he's walking in his purpose because yes. he said yes at 40. And then my grandmother, whose dream was to be an author, Scott Davin Meemaw, she has a book now. <laughs> oh, that's great. And she yeah. published it, but her dream had always been, but they told her, you know, women can't write, women can't speak. Right, right. But she went to, at 74, she published her first wow, book. And so her. I think that it's never too late. Age is not an obstacle. Age, age should not yeah. be an obstacle, <laughs> even though it is, you know, social media, age can be a hindrance, but we can't right. let it be. Exactly. My, um, one of my favorite people, he, his, he goes, um, Kate never could until he tried. You know, yeah, it's exactly. like, you've got to get out yes. there and try. If right. God's put this gift and mm -hmm. calling in you, whether it is a book, whether it's singing, you've got to get out there and try and right. take that first step. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about earlier, I was, did a zipline course. It was the 
longest, highest, fastest zip line in America, and uh, it, actually in North America, and it's just taking that step. And you may scream all the way. <laughs> what, an, what an adventure when you say right. yes to your purpose for God, with God. Yes. What an adventure life actually is, don't you think? I think sometimes, yes, it is. And I think sometimes we have to irritate each other to good work. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I remember I like, when Dan. I use that one. <laughs> that is, that's good. I do that to my wife all the time. I irritate her. Yeah. But I know with Dan, we've worked together, and mm -hmm. he started saying years ago, and I saw him how he would counsel people. And he during break, when we're not live on air, he'd say, mm -hmm. I really want to be a counselor. I said, Dan, you need to do it. For five years, I nagged him right. to do it. <laughs> right. Dan, you can yeah. do it. I don't want, I, you know, I, I want to hang with you and do the show, but you really need to do this. It's in you. You can do it. Mm -hmm. And five years later, here he is moving forward. I'm so excited yes. because he's fulfilling. Awesome. That's a part of his yeah. purpose. Right. That's his desire. Yeah. He mm -hmm. loves people. And it's changed over time. Yes. And it's not too late. And it's not too not late. Too and, late. And, and for too long, I was listening to the other voices that were saying, oh, no, it's it's too late in life for you to, to make a change. Yeah. Right. You're, you're stable where you are now. Don't don't mess everything mm -hmm. up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, you just finally have to take that step. You have yeah. to take it. And you're not messing things up when you're following Jesus. Right. right. When, he, when you're pulling it. out, that, when you're going with that tug, inside yeah. your heart, you're not, it's not, you're not going to mess up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. For a time such as this, and God uses those too. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do think, you know, you talk about being a, being a mom, and that is a huge purpose and a huge mm -hmm. calling. Yes. You know, but I do think for those moms out there who are working, you know, you can, you can do both, but yes. you, have to, you have to set your priorities. You have to have your priorities in order. Caitlin's getting ready to be a mom, yeah. right? Balance and so, them both. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you learn to balance both. Yeah, but that all comes with spending time right. with the Father. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we're glorifying God in everything yes. we do. Then right. We're doing what God has called us. That's right. Yeah. That's, That's right. Good. And, yes. and then you'll be walking in your purpose, fulfilling fulfilling mm -hmm. your um, your dreams and your heart's desires because that's really what God wants. He came so that we would have life and have it abundantly. Yes. So I think that that's what he wants his children mm -hmm. to do. That's yeah. good. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it reminds me of John 17. I, I believe it's 17, 4. It says, I honored you here on earth by completing down to the last detail the purpose you had for my life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Great scripture. Amen. That great is great. Scripture. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more on the Christian view and finding your purpose. To the Christian view. We've had a great discussion today on finding your purpose. I want to leave you with Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be given to you. God loves you. Stay faithful to him. Stay connected. Stay in the word. See you next time.